grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our consideration this morning is our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 24. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, through faith in Christ, are you open minded? Would you consider yourselves to be open-minded people? It's kind of a tough question, isn't it? I suppose it depends on what you mean by open-minded. In our world today, in our culture today, very often to be open-minded means that you're open to thinking that any idea or philosophy or religion is as equally true and valid as any other. And I suppose if that's the definition of what it means to be open-minded, well, I sure hope you're not open-minded. Because there are all kinds of ideas, all kinds of philosophies, and all kinds of religions that are false, that are wrong, that are untrue, that are evil. On the other hand, if being open-minded means that you have the ability to listen to what someone else has to say, if being open-minded means that you're willing to listen to someone else's point of view, I hope that you are open-minded. I hope that I consider myself to be open-minded. I actually took a quiz this week online. It was a quiz on a website that purported to tell you if you were open-minded or not. How do you think I did? That shouldn't be so funny to you. I didn't do so well. I answered all of the questions on this particular quiz and I was amazed that at the end it gave me a percentage of how open my mind was. My mind, you should know, is only 12% open. <laughs> but more than that, it was what this particular website told me after I took the quiz that I thought was interesting. It said this, you may be surprised to hear that you're not very open-minded and a little judgmental. You tend to dislike others that are different from you. While you may be open to a few new things, you don't reach far beyond what you believe. And it's likely that you don't even want to discuss different points of view. Well, why did I start with this ridiculous introduction today? Because in the words of our text, Jesus, as he so often does, reinvents for us words and topics, and in this case, even that phrase, open-minded. Did you catch it in our text for today? Listen again to these words. Then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. In other words, to be open-minded according to this text is not to open your mind yourself and to allow anything and everything in. No, to be open-minded is something that can only happen when Jesus himself opens your minds. And what does he open your minds to? He opens your minds to be able to understand the scriptures. And for these disciples on Easter evening, understanding the scriptures was understanding that the Old Testament had prophesied just exactly what had happened to Jesus. Opening their minds meant that, that the Old Testament had said that the Christ would suffer and die and rise again, and that was exactly what had happened, so that these disciples, with their minds now open, could understand that the one who was standing before them was very much their Lord and their Savior, who was very much real and very much alive, and that this was all in accordance with the plan that God had set up and had proclaimed in the scriptures. In fact, this takes place on Easter evening and it was the second time on this day when we are told that Jesus opened up the minds of his disciples. The other time was when he was walking with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Do you remember that story? It was in the afternoon of Easter Sunday. Jesus had risen from death and he appeared and was walking with two of his disciples. And those two disciples were talking about everything that had happened. They were talking about the death 
of their Lord Jesus and they were trying to process his crucifixion and, and they were also talking about now how some of the women in their group had said he was alive and they just couldn't understand it. They couldn't wrap their minds around it. And so Jesus, as he walked with them, explained to them, this is what the scripture said would happen to the Messiah, that he would suffer, that he would die, that he would rise again. And those disciples were kept from recognizing their risen Lord until he entered into their house and as he was eating with them, he broke bread and gave thanks and then their eyes were opened to see their Lord Jesus. And what they said after that event was this. They said, weren't our hearts burning within us when Jesus opened the scriptures to us? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we sit here today as those who by God's grace have had their minds opened by Jesus himself so that we can understand the scriptures. We sit here today not having opened our own minds so that we can understand our God, but rather having our God himself having opened up our minds to understand the scriptures so that we know who he is and what he has done. And you see, that's the great irony of our open minds. They're extremely narrowly focused. Let me say that again. Our open minds are extremely narrowly focused because we are focused on Christ and on His suffering and death and resurrection and now on His message that we've been given for the world, a message that Jesus said is a message of repentance and forgiveness of sins. But here's the problem for us. Well, maybe not for you. You'll have to decide that for yourself. Here's the problem that I struggle with. You see, my mind has been opened by the grace of God to understand the scriptures. My mind has been opened so that I know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. My mind has been opened so that I know what this world is all about. And yet sometimes, sometimes, somehow, I get arrogant about that. And I look down on those who don't believe as I do. You know, I had to chuckle when that website said that it's likely that you don't even want to discuss different points of view. You know what? That's actually kind of true. And that's not a good thing. Why? Because we live in a world where so many people do not know their Lord, and yet we have been called not to arrogantly look down upon them as if they were foolish and stupid and silly, but rather to look upon them as those who need to have their minds opened by Jesus just as we have had our minds opened by Jesus. You see, we are called to look at our neighbors and to look at our family members and our co-workers who don't believe in Jesus, not as those who are silly and foolish and ridiculous in their views and in their lifestyles and in their morality. We are called to see them as those who need to know the truth of God's Word. We are called to proclaim a message of repentance and forgiveness of sins to them because it's the message for all nations. I worry sometimes for the church today. I worry because we are now in a world, we are in a culture where there is so much hostility to the Christian message. We live in a world whose morality so often has gone so far off the deep end. But the danger for us in the church is to smugly and arrogantly mock those who are so far away from God. But don't you get it? The same Jesus who opened your mind to the truth of the Scriptures can open their minds. The same Jesus who has brought you to faith in Him who died and rose can bring them to faith in Him who died and rose. We have a narrow focus as the people of God. Our narrow focus is on Christ and what He has done. And our narrow focus is on the message that we have been called 
to proclaim. And yet, though we have a narrow message, God, help us not to be narrow-minded and arrogant as we look down on those who don't know their Lord. But rather, may God open up our hearts and our minds to see those who don't know Jesus as those who need to hear about Jesus, those who need to be called to repentance and forgiveness of sins. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank your God today that Jesus has opened your mind up to the truth. Thank your God today that you know who He is and what He has done for you. And ask your God today that He would give you a heart full of compassion for those who don't know Him. That we as individuals, as a congregation, as a church, might proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations until Christ comes back. May it be so for His glory. Amen. Please stand.